Hi guys, Olive here, here today with my spring book haul. If you've been watching my channel for any length of time, or if you follow me over on Instagram, then you probably know that I fairly regularly find myself in used bookstores or at library book sales. Those are a particular favorite of mine. So I've got new to me books coming in here to this reading room quite often. And what I do every single season is I take that giant stack of books and I pull all the ones that remind Mind me of the upcoming season. So in today's video, I want to show you all the books that I've acquired recently that remind me of the springtime. Let me start off by showing you the few fiction books that I acquired, me being a nonfiction lover as usual. This haul will be very nonfiction dominant, but there were a few novels that I picked up that struck me as being very springish. One of those was March by Geraldine Brooks. I thought this one suited the season because right now it is in fact March. This novel expands upon the world of Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. The author creates a story for Mr. March, the father of the girls, who is absent from Little Women because he's off fighting in the American Civil War. I finally read one of this author's other novels, People of the Book. It's a very popular one. I finally read it last year and I thought it was great. And I've been wanting to pick up this one because I hear it's also great. I also got one other novel that is, at least in a small way, connected to the classics. It's called Godmersham Park by Jill Hornby. In this book, the author tells a fictionalized version of the story of Anne Sharp, who was one of Jane Austen's friends, and she was actually once Jane Austen's governess. I've heard amazing things about this one. I wanted it so much that I actually special ordered this UK cover from Book Depository. I don't do that all the time, but I much prefer this UK cover. This last novel that I got, I actually got in the exact same Book Depository order as I got Godmersham Park. I had seen some reviews of this and I had to have it. It's called The Impulse Purchase by Veronica Henry. This is about a family of women, three generations of women who take over the running of a beaten up old pub. Everyone said that this is a delight, just a pure comfort read, which is always what I want in the spring. And speaking of comfort, I also got a book about what is for me a comfort watch. It's called Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, Children, Television, and Fred Rogers by David Newell. This is a collection of essays about the TV show Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood and its enduring impact. I think everyone loves Mr. Rogers, Fred Rogers, but I think we here in Pittsburgh love him just a little bit more than your average person because he was from the Pittsburgh area. So we really cherish Fred Rogers around here. I can't wait to read this. I also got another book about something I love to watch called Don't You Forget About Me, Contemporary Writers on the Films of John Hughes. This is another essay collection, but in this one, the writers discuss the different movies that John Hughes made including The Breakfast Club, which anytime I'm asked to pick a favorite movie, I always say The Breakfast Club. I don't think there is another movie out there that I love more than The Breakfast Club. Now, embarrassingly enough, I have not seen all of John Hughes's movies. I'm actually kind of hoping that reading through this essay collection will inspire me to go back and see the ones that I haven't seen yet. From film to the stage, I also picked up Putting It Together, How Stephen Sondheim and I Created Sunday in the Park with George by James Lapine. This book tells the story of how the musical Sunday in the Park with George came to be. It was actually based on a 19th century painting. I saw a production of the musical back in 2019 here in Pittsburgh. It was incredible, and I would love to know how they created it. Another book I got about the inspirational abilities of art is called The Pen and the Brush, How Passion for Art Shaped 19th Century Novels by Anka Molstein. In this book, the author looks at a small handful of late 19th, early 20th century French writers and how their work was shaped by art. It sounds like a fascinating, if rather niche topic, which I personally love. This is also a gorgeous book, and I can't believe I found this pristine of a copy at a library book sale. But now let's move into all the bird books that I've picked up recently. My friend Steve Donahue actually sent me this first one. It's called Birds and Us by Tim Burkhead. The author of this book is a celebrated ornithologist. And in this book, he gives us the history of the human relationship with birds from ancient days all the way up to the modern day. 
This book is gorgeous and I plan to inhale this like the bird nerd that I am. So thank you again, Steve, for sending this my way. This next book I bought for myself and I'm going to be honest, I bought this book out of spite. It's called Birdology by Cy Montgomery. This is a collection of different stories about birds, and that's not the upsetting part. The content is not what has upset me about this book. What has upset me is how the publisher has been acting. They've been regularly now, they've done it twice, and I think they're about to do it again this spring. They've been taking chapters from this book, repackaging them as hardcovers, and charging $20 a pop for them when this book is still in print. Hence how I have it in my hand right now. This is not a used copy. This is a brand new book. They started doing this with a book about hummingbirds, which I read and reviewed here on my channel. And when I first picked that book up, I didn't know that that's what that book was. I didn't know it was just a copy paste version of a chapter from this book. It didn't even have any updated information. It was just the chapter. And I personally felt very deceived. I thought it was very dishonest, just very fine print in the book itself. They said what it was, but they didn't make it clear, at least now when they're releasing these hardcovers, they're putting it right on the cover because I'm pretty sure other readers like myself out there probably were made upset by this fact. In fact, I've had a few people reach out to me telling me that they were also very upset by that. But the fact that they're doing it again this spring from what I can see just makes my blood boil. I find it so greedy and unnecessary, and I would personally like to read and review this book and get the word out there that if you want to read that material and you don't want to pay that much money for it, you have another option. But moving on, I also got a used copy of Crow Planet, Essential Wisdom from the Urban Wilderness by Leanda Lynn Haupt. This is a book all about how crows are thriving right now because they've learned how to take advantage of living in urban areas. We have a ton of crows around here. I really enjoy watching them. They are so smart. And I really love when they start harassing the hawks that also live around here. They'll follow them from branch to branch, pull their tail feathers. I get out my binoculars and have a good old time watching them. I can't wait to hear this author's take on crows. But speaking of watching birds in my own backyard, I also got Slow Birding by Joni Strassman, which is a book about exactly that, birding by way of watching birds in your own neighborhood. We have so many birds around here. I love watching them. In fact, I will often sit here filming and get distracted by birds outside of my window. I just want to stare at them and I forget what I'm talking about. I was paging through this book when I saw it at a Barnes and Noble and I was pretty sure I was going to buy it. And then I saw that there's a section that discusses the Cooper's Hawk. We have one of those around here. It's one of the hawks that the crows like to harass. I love watching it hunt. So when I saw that there was a section about the Cooper's hawk, I was sold on this completely. But then I got a couple more books on birding, including Kingbird Highway by Ken Kaufman. This is the author's memoir in which he discusses how he, at 16 years old in the 1970s, decided to go on an epic cross-country road trip in search of birds. He wanted to set a record for most species of North American birds seen in a calendar year. From everything I've heard about this, this seems to be the ultimate birding memoir Everyone seems to recommend this one, so I'm very excited to read it. The other birding book I got is a library book sale find. It's called The Life of the Skies by Jonathan Rosen. This book seems to blend memoir, nature writing, history, and philosophy. It's a series of interconnected essays in which the author discusses the history of birding and his own personal story of getting into the hobby. The last bird book I picked up is actually yet another library book sale find. It's Wesley the Owl by Stacey O'Brien. This book tells the story of how a biologist in the 1980s adopted an injured baby barn owl. He would not have survived in the wild on his own, so they brought him into the family, named him Wesley, and he proceeded to make their home his own. I also got a few more books about human-animal relationships. The first one is called Along Came a Llama by Ruth Jeanette Ruck. This is the story of how a llama came to live on a Welsh farm in the 1970s, and that was a time when very few llamas were living in Britain. 
I know llamas don't have the best reputations, what with the spinning and all, but I do think this sounds adorable. I also got Patty by R.D. Lawrence, which is about a naturalist who adopted a baby beaver, and Frosty by Harriet E. Weaver, which is about a woman who took in an orphaned baby raccoon. But speaking of relationships with nature, I also picked up Kissed by a Fox by Priscilla Stuckley. This is a memoir in essays in which the author discusses her own relationship with nature, largely on a spiritual level. From all the Goodreads reviews I saw of this, it seems to be a good one to pick up if you, like me, and I know many others, enjoyed Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer. Next, I got The Unexpected Genius of Pigs by Matt Wyman. This is a short little book about the farm animals who are far smarter and good-natured than most people give them credit for. But I also got a few books that are either about or at least feature insects, and the first one is a gorgeous-looking book called The Mod. Moth Snowstorm by Michael McCarthy. This is another unconventional memoir all about the joys to be found in nature. Then there's Of Cockroaches and Crickets by Frank Nishk, which the publisher Greystone Books was kind enough to send to me. In this book, the entomologist author makes a case for some of the less loved insects amongst us because they serve very critical functions in our ecosystem. But since we're on the topic of insects that humans tend to find icky, I also got a copy of Super. Superfly by Jonathan Balcombe. The author of this book is a biologist who also aims to open our eyes to all the critical roles that flies play in the ecosystem and just how impressive they are. I am admittedly not the biggest fan of flies, but I'm ready to have my mind changed. But that's enough about bugs. Let's move on to some more nature books that I have to show you that are far less creepy crawly. This first one is a lot more thorny, you could say. It's by any other name, A Cultural History of the Rose by Simon Morley. This book is all about the cultural meaning, the cultural significance we've given this flower over the centuries. I also picked up a very popular nature read called The Hidden Life of Trees by Peter Wallabin. This book discusses the astonishing science of trees how they communicate with one another, how they protect themselves from illnesses, how they look out for their offspring. I know this book has blown so many people's minds, and what blows my mind is the fact that I've never read it. Since April is swiftly approaching, this next one seemed like an appropriate one to include in a springtime book haul. It's called Rain, A Natural and Cultural History by Cynthia Barnett. In this book, the author looks at rain as a naturally occurring phenomenon, but also not unlike the book on roses, she looks at how human beings have viewed rain in a cultural way. The rest of the books in this book haul are all about humans. First, there are a few about the human body, and then there are a few books just about human stories. This first one of those is called The Unseen Body by Jonathan Reisman. This book seems to blend anecdotes and medical information as the author takes us on a figurative journey through the human body. This one seems right up my alley. Another book by a doctor, I got a copy of Better by Atul Gawande, which is a book all about how doctors strive to perform at their very best. Atul Gawande wrote one of my all-time favorite nonfiction books, Being Mortal. I've been wanting to go back and read all of his backlist books, all the ones I haven't gotten to yet, hence why I picked this one up. The last medical book I got is called Early by Sarah D. Gregorio. This book gives a history of premature birth, and it talks about the advances in science that have saved countless lives. The penultimate book in this book haul I picked up because I heard this author speak at a virtual book festival I attended a couple of years ago. That book is called The Secret History of Home Economics by Danielle Drellinger. In this book, the author talks about how women in the 20th century pursued opportunities to study and then to work in the field of home economics because it was one of the very few fields open to them at the time, but how they thrived both personally and professionally, even given those limitations. And then the final book in this book haul is a memoir called Stray by Stephanie Dandler. The author of this book wrote a novel that I really enjoyed called Sweet Bitter. I've talked about it a number of times on this channel. I actually did a book versus TV show. I talked about the first season of the TV adaptation. But in this memoir, Stephanie Dandler actually talks about some things she had to deal with, family things she had to confront following the publication of Sweet Bitter. 
I've heard this is really good, and I am always intrigued to hear authors' stories, things that happened to them during and after the publication of their books. So those are all of my recent book acquisitions that reminded me of the springtime. I want to hear from you. Are you interested to read any of these books? Have you read any of them? Is there anywhere you would recommend I start with this giant stack of books? I want to hear any or all of that down in the comment section below. In the description box below, you'll see links to all the books I mentioned today. They are there for your click and convenience. If you're on a mobile device, just tap the title of this video and that box will open up for you. And at the bottom of that exact same description box, you'll see links to everywhere you can find me around the internet, like Goodreads, Instagram, the Story Graph, all the places I'm the most active, just in case you want to keep up with what I am reading and writing about right now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I will see you in the next video. Bye.